these bodies is so fucking stupid. What is up my dudes, it is Weezer or Edwin Hubble, and I am back in another War Thunder video. Now, if you are unfamiliar with this series, I will start off by saying that it is inspired by another YouTuber, who also does War Thunder. But they've been uh, slacking or not really doing these videos anymore, so I decided I would uh, try my hand at this and see what happens. So, the series is called Loving the Unloved. It's where you take a plane or vehicle that is statistically not great, and you try and do well in it. So, my first stab at this will not be in the MiG-19S, it will be in the legendary F7F1 Tiger Cat, situated at 6.0 in the American Navy tree. So, a little bit of historical information on this aircraft, it was first produced, or er, first flew on the 2nd of November in 1943, and it was mass produced from about mid-1944 to early 1946. But it served in the U.S. Air Force and Marine Corps up until about 1954, just after the Korean War. So, it arrived too late to see action in World War II in the Pacific Theater, as this is a Navy aircraft, so it would have been situated on aircraft carriers. But it did see combat as a night fighter and a ground attack aircraft in the Korean War that lasted from 1950 to 1953. So... There are four variants of this aircraft, two of which are in the game. You have the F7F1, the F7F2, the F7F3, and the F7F4. And you have little or more sub-variants like night fighters, drone aircraft uh, that were produced. But in-game you have just the daytime fighter single seat and the single seat daytime version of the F7F3 over here. So, what's different about the F7F1 and the F7F3 in-game? Basically, the F7F1, as you can see, I'll go over to the F7F3 in a second, has a smaller tail than the F7F3, and weaker engines by about 180 horsepower than the F7F3. So let's come over here, you can see that it is visibly larger. <laughs> oh my god, it's like 20% bigger or something. And the engines are Pratt Whitney R2834's W's, while the ones on the F7F1 are Pratt and Whitney R2800 22W 18 cylinder radial engines. So, this aircraft, uh, if you have it spaded, goes about 460 miles per hour with a rated climb at about 4,500 feet per minute. I don't know what that is in uh, metric units. I only use freedom units, but uh, the wingspan is about 51 feet, it's about 46 feet from nose to tail, and it's about 16 feet off the ground from the ground to the top of the tail. So um, I'm losing my train of thought here. Anyway, so F7F1 is statistically a bad aircraft at 6.0, I would like to see it at about 5357 5, where around the Hornet is that way it can't see jets they have about the same play style as you can see kind of the same layout so uh, if I were Gaijin I would honestly just down tier this aircraft so it can be more competitive because honestly at 6.0 it's not that great it is armed with 420mm cannons and 450 caliber machine guns but don't let the heavy hitting armament fool you it, uh, it does not perform well, only because this plane is relegated to really baiting uh, into aircraft into head-ons, or you have to catch them when they're, let's say, stall climbing or just run out of energy. you got to kind of pounce in and pounce out real fast, because this aircraft doesn't have great energy retention, which doesn't make a lot of sense, because it's supposed to be used as an energy fighter. And it gets outclimbed a lot up at 6.0. It can face early jets like the ME262, Heinkel 162, the Kika, R2Y2s. It just gets outplayed by aircraft that are just better <laughs> in every way. It, it has been power creeped a little bit. But um, let's, uh, let's get into some games and see if I can't get any kills with it. So we did get a slight up tier up to 6.3 as you can tell by the P51H. 
Um, I would like to add that the F7F2, 3, and 4 also had night fighter variants. The F7F1 did not. So, it had a radar, as it was a night fighter, and it was a two-seater, but the pilot and radio, not radio, radar operator might not have sat side by side. They may have sat back to back, so the radar operator might have been sitting where the red star is, up near the canopy of the pilot. So, uh, yeah, that was just a little tidbit of information I would have liked to have added in the intro, but I uh, neglected to mention it because I forgot. Anyway, uh, I have started my side climb, and I will see you guys when I make first contact. So we have reached our combat altitude of about 20,000 feet, which is a safe altitude for this aircraft. There's a JE-288C up at this altitude with me as well. I might try and get him in a head-on, see if I can or can't get a deflection shot on him. I don't want to come in on his tail because he is a JE-288C. Looks like he's going to try and bait me onto his tail. I'm not going to fall for that. And I'm going to break off and hopefully not take much damage. Took some damage to the left engine cowling and uh, engine shroud. I'm going to try and break off, disengage from him. He has a TAL-152 buddy. Probably just going to dive down. Ooh! The F109K came out of nowhere. I'm going to dive away from him, use my superior weight and momentum to try and get away. I'm going to dive down in the clouds and lose him that way. There is a BF-109 below me. If you do hear any background noise, it is raining and thundering out here, so that's probably what that is. Alright, here we come. Let's see if we can't get him. Coming in pretty fast on him. He might turn. Yeah, he's turning. And that's a kill. Let's see if we can't get this BF-109 as well. Alright, he broke off. I'm going to go back up. Got a 190 on my tail. Hopefully he decides to break away and stop chasing me. The tall 152 on my tail as well. He's never going to hit me like that. I'm just going to run away from him, disengage, and break contact. And when they decide that they want to break away, this tall 152 is still chasing me. seems to keep wanting to chase. Alright. There's a 190 up in the clouds still. I'm going to get it from the clouds and uh, try and come back around. Alright, I'm in the clouds again. I'm going to turn back and repeat the process. This is how you want to play this aircraft because it doesn't really turn well. It's a heavy aircraft, so you want to use it in an energy fighter role, there's the 190 in the clouds as well, right there. I'm gonna see if, uh, if we can't get him. He may have turned around as well. If you can't see him, he has a little dot right above Chibi VR's name. Oh, boy. Yep, the spotting system in this game is really bad, especially in clouds. He decided he wanted to chase me, so I'm just going to break away from him. I'm just going to run. That's all I can do. I can't really fight him. G288 coming in for a head-on. No sauce, no sauce. Got some hits. Looks like he suffered cooling damage. Going to be a 109. I'm just gonna try and run away as fast as I can, get out of here, break contact with the enemy. Let's see if we can't get this BF-109. Nope. No sauce. He went up. He's gonna try and loop back. I'm just gonna keep on running. That's that's what I'm gonna do. He'll have to get pretty lucky to hit me. He might break off. Got another guy on my 6 who just showed up. Probably, yep, it's that TAW 152. And there goes my tail fins. And there goes my tail. 
Pretty, pretty rough mats. So let's see if we can't get a better one next time. All right, I am here in the next match, and it is a full up to your R2Y2s at 7.0. Have Heinkel 162 at 6.7, AR234 B2 at 6.7. Oh boy, that means there's gonna be R2Y2s on the enemy team, and I am already not looking forward to this. Two people already left, that's interesting. Maybe they haven't loaded in yet. Anyway, I will... That one was loud. <laughs> you guys probably definitely heard that one. Anyway, I will be back if uh, anything develops this match. Alright, I have reached my combat altitude of about 22,000 feet. Uh, I have a contact right off my nose. He seems to be climbing still. Uh, I want to see if I can get him in head on B109. Oh boy. This is going to be one of two ways. Looks like he's coming in for head on. Fire. Hits. Nothing. I'm just gonna keep going. Just keep going. I'm gonna open the distance and see if I can't turn back around on it. off that way, about 12 miles out. I might turn back around and try and get this guy. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Got two miles to uh, turn back around and close the distance. That should be enough, I hope. <laughs> we'll see. Hit some more hits. Got him. Alright, uh, I'm going to head over that way and see if I can't get in on some of that action over there. I will see you guys if that happens. Since I'm a scumbag, I may tail this G-280 and I'm not gonna chase him. This Spitfire is gonna probably do it and get himself in the pool. Uh, I'll probably trail him about this high up. Start following him. Out, outside of his gun range, looks like he on the end of Spitfire boat. Uh, yeah, he's gonna run away. Got a tall one, 252, and go 355. About 5 miles away, 4, 4.85 miles away. I am probably not gonna climb all the way up super high. Oh boy, that's a lot of contact. I'm gonna stay over here. Spitfire is already getting pounced. Where, where do allied teams even go in, in realistic matches? Like, where? I mean, I guess. <laughs> I don't. I don't know where they go, dude. I don't know. Uh, I got a Doe 335 down low, BF 109 down low. I'm gonna pounce on the Doe 335. Looks like he's going straight up. Easy kill. Easy kill. Let's open up the throttle. Let's see if we can't get him. Circle back. Pump up this F4U, he's got a 190 on him. Go 355 just went down, 190's gonna get the F4U in his pass, I believe. Yep. Yeah, not gonna get him. BF109 also crashed. Now I am at a serious disadvantage. Alright, I have made contact, looks like a J288. Do 217 actually, this can be much easier if he doesn't dive away from me. I don't think he's going to, he is going to dive away from me. They always gotta make it difficult. And he jayed out. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't be that guy. No one likes that guy. 
that's a reportable offense and it can get you banned. And I'm probably going to report that guy because just don't do that. It's not cool. Got a Heinkel 177 as well. So he's turning in? He turned in? Am I trailing him? No. Okay, it's like a weird deflection angle. Let's see if I can get him. Critted him. Okay, he's on fire. I'm gonna get away from that 20mm tail gun. He's already opening fire on me. That's probably a kill. That's definitely a kill. Got a T56. Climbing away. Oh no, he put it out. He's gonna get pounced on by that other F7F. That was a pretty good um, good run on him. I might get an assist for that. It'd be pretty cool if I did. Uh, okay, he's still up. T56, I'm trailing him. Got a FW190 off to my 9 o'clock, about 2 miles away. T56 does see me, he's turning. Looks like he's gonna try to meet me. And that's a kill. His mistake was going head on. Like I said, if you can force a head on, do so. Yeah, I got an assist for the uh, Heinkel 177. That's 190 is above me. He's getting tailed by a Spitfire though. Those two B-17s are sticking close together. That's smart on them. I'm probably gonna die here. Um, 190 up high. Another 190 up high. I'm probably going to go for this 109. Actually, they look like they're preoccupied with B-17s. That's good for me. I'm going to pounce on this Italian uh, B-109 K-14. Not K-14, G-14. I don't think he sees me. He does not see me. Nothing. This point is a brick. I'm going to just keep on going. come back around on him. That guy did get the Spitfire, so now it's two versus one. If G14 got him, he wingtipped me. More more than a wingtip actually. <laughs> oh shit. I didn't know you could do that. That's awesome. The entire propeller is missing. Uh, I'm probably going to go down and I will see you guys next match. Alright, I am here in Operation Iskra. Uh, this is a new map to me. It looks like it's 7.0. Huh. 6.7 probably. I have no idea. F3D should be at least 7.3 with that giant radar on the nose and radar assisted aiming. Anyway, um... Yeah, new map to me, never seen it before. May have been in rotation for a while, I'm not too sure. Uh, we are facing the Germans and Japanese, so I won't be surprised if there is some higher level KI-84s and Tawa 52 cs Anyway, uh, I will see you guys uh, if anything happens. J7W pouncing on our uh, ground attack aircraft. Looks like there's another one down there. Uh, Rada 234 could be the cannon version, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think it could be. Alright, where'd he go? Damn it, I lost him. There he is. Target reacquired. Sky Raider hit the uh, Shinden, which is the J7W1. Yeah, I'm probably not going to cast this guy. I am probably going to disengage F3D is still alive another Arado a lot of Arados this match yeah we got up to Heinkel 162 Port 229 yeah it's all uh, looks like it's all jets this match I don't think anything's gonna happen it's disappointing this thing should really be 5.7 um, yeah, oh boy. All right, well, nothing's happening, so, wait a minute, there's a guy over there. Ah, something might actually happen. Let me make my way over there and see what you are. I don't think anyone else is 
spotted him. Where'd you go? There he is. Looks like a propeller aircraft, maybe? ME262, it's the uh, 50mm bomber destroyer one. It's gonna bounce on him right now. Got him. Uh, ooh, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Awesome. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Um, let's see if we can't get this 229 as well. I'm a lot lower than I'd like to be, but since they're just jets anyway, it doesn't really matter what altitude I'm at, they're gonna outperform me anyway. Japanese aircraft. 239 looks like it's still running away. I-225 is giving him chase. Uh, B-24 shot down. K-87, K-83 shot down. B-24. K-83 is like the Japanese equivalent of the F-7F. It's got two 20 millimeter cannons and two 30 millimeter cannons. The newest situated 6.0 as well. Never flown it myself. Probably never gonna get it. Uh, it doesn't seem like my cup of tea, actually. Uh, Horton 229 just uh, had a head on exchange with the IT 25. Uh, let's see. There we go. I want this I 225 to come to me. That way I can assist him, but I don't think he, he gets the message. I hear Jet. Where is it? It's somewhere. I hear it. aircraft you will lose just about every single time. The Arado is coming for me now. Let's take it for a ride. Alright, where'd you go? There he is. That's the cannon version. I think that one's up at 7.0. Alright, let's uh, hope we make some mistake here. Another Arado. Alrighty. Another head on exchange. Yeah, that wasn't gonna happen. I'm just gonna try and take him over the airfield actually. Oh man, this 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 is sad. This is sad. Alright, let's turn again. Alright, let's turn this way. Fly on the defensive. Alright, where's the other one at? There they are. Let's see if I can drag them closer to the airfield. Come on. Come on. Ow. And, ooh, ooh. Okay. 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 I don't know how I'm still flying. Uh, magic? Never mind. Oh, uh, that is gay. Oh boy, yeah, that sucked. <laughs> A lot. And... Yeet. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, I decided I was going to go ahead and call it after that match, actually. The video is approaching the uh, 23 minute mark, and uh, with this outro, it definitely will, uh surpass the 23 minute mark so the f7f up at 6.0 um i can see why people would fly it but i personally do not think it's competitive at 6.0 maybe at 5.7 it would be a lot more competitive um if i could describe this aircraft in one word i would say um underwhelming would probably be the best word to put it. It's not a bad plane, it's just not competitive where it's at currently in the game with the current meta of other aircraft of respective battle ratings. 
So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I did have fun making it. A little bit of a headache, but I still had fun. So, uh, if you guys enjoyed it, uh, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.